with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken and then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, part of the proclamation of the Gospel is that Jesus will return. It is a part of our faith, and it is a source of consolation for the persecuted, for those who are oppressed, for those who feel as though justice will never come to them. And it is a sign of hope and a proclamation of peace for those who suffer physically, that the end will come and joy will come again. Jesus will return. And in these final weeks of the church's year, we remember this. It can be kind of appropriate as it gets colder outside and darker earlier. We think of things that remind us of the end. But we're also aware that the end can come in a thousand different ways, centuries, millennia before the return of the king, which may happen tonight may happen next week, may happen 30,000 years from now. I think of the terrible wildfires in California and our brothers and sisters who now have nothing, nothing. These fires that have ravaged their property, taken family members, and they have nowhere to go. Judgment Day has come to them. We think of families that lay to rest young ones or spouses far before their time. A kind of a judgment day has come to that household. We think of the loss of a job, the loss of security, moments of great stress and challenge where the world seems to be collapsing all around us. And then there are those less dramatic changes but change is all the same. We think of times in our own life where things change, perhaps the ending of a job because of retirement, perhaps the leaving of family from our home as they go up to college. Again, certainly not, certainly not the sorrow of the previous examples, but still radical major change in our life. My friends, we are a pilgrim people all of these situations, terrible or full of consolation, remind us that we are on a journey. We are traveling. We are not home yet. And whether the Lord returns tonight or 30,000 years ago, the principle remains. We must be open to his coming now, now. The Messiah comes today. Certainly in a matter of moments, as the Eucharistic Lord is raised before our eyes, behold the Lamb of God, the same Jesus who will come in judgment is here. But he is also the same Jesus who is with the suffering. He is also the same Jesus who is with those who are going times of tremendous trial, and he is with them. And in these moments of transfer, these moments of change, he calls out to him, to us, to trust him and to walk closer with him, to intensify our prayer. 
to call upon him as our Messiah. My dear brothers and sisters, whether or not tragedy strikes your home, whether or not it has already, whether or not change is in the air right now in your family or in your own life, these things will come. They will come, just as sure as the Messiah will return. But through it all, we believe. We believe that as a pilgrim people, our homeland is not here. And so even as we suffer, even as we lay to rest loved ones far before their time, we continue to walk. We walk in a world that is dark and can be cold, and we support one another, and we build one another up, and we remind one another through support and through prayer, Jesus is with us. Even now, even now, as the sky is falling, he is with us, even now. And the final victory is his. The Christian, even in the midst of awful, awesome suffering, remains a person of hope. I realize that that is a heck of a lot easier to say than to do, but it remains a call for every believer to be people of hope, to trust in the triumph of life over death, of good over evil. We believe, we believe in the return of the King, that he will make all things right, all things. Until then, let us be there for one another, let us support one another, and let us help each other endure the trials and the changes and the traumas of life. We are a pilgrim people.